Good morning, everybody. It's um, just shortly before nine o'clock. A few seconds, it will be um, nine o'clock. So, welcome to morning prayer. It's great to see you this um, Thursday morning as we gather together in the Lord's presence in our homes as we um, spend some time at the start of the day praying together. Uh, remember me, I have an assembly this morning, um, shortly after um, prayers, I'll be going straight across to Devonshire Primary Academy to um, share with the children there for a few minutes. But whatever we're up to today, wherever we're going or not, as the case may be, at home or wherever we find ourselves today, let us commit this time to God. In the silence, O oh Lord, in the quiet, <coughs> we pray that you would breathe your spirit into us afresh. We say welcome, Holy Spirit, into our hearts and our lives, into this day, that we would know you as the counsellor the comforter, the gift giver, that wherever we go today we will spread the fragrance of Jesus Christ. Amen. So we turn to the order as it's um, published and as you know the responses are in the bold type. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Blessed are you, Sovereign God, Creator of all. To you be glory and praise for ever. You founded the earth in the beginning, and the heavens are the work of your hands. In the fullness of time you made us in your image. And in these last days you have spoken to us in your Son, Jesus Christ, the Word made flesh. As we rejoice in the gift of your presence among us, let the light of your love always shine in our hearts, your Spirit ever renew our lives, and your praises ever be on our lips. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. A song of God's blessing based on Psalm 67. God be gracious to us and bless us, and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O oh God. Let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we Rejoice in the gift of this new day. So may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. There's one set psalm for today, and that's Psalm 37. Fret not because of evildoers. Be not jealous of those who do wrong. 
for they shall soon wither like grass, and like the green herb fade away. Trust in the Lord, and be doing good. Dwell in the land, and be nourished with truth. Let your delight be in the Lord, and he will give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light and your just dealing as the noonday. Be still before the Lord and wait for him. Do not fret over those who prosper as they follow their evil schemes. Refrain from anger and abandon wrath. Do not fret, lest you be moved to do evil. For evildoers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. Yet a little while, and the wicked shall be no more. You will search for their place, and find them gone. But the lowly shall possess the land, and shall delight in abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the righteous, and gnash at them with their teeth. The Lord shall laugh at the wicked, for he sees that their day is coming. The wicked draw their sword and bend their bow, to strike down the poor and needy, to slaughter those who walk in truth. Their sword shall go through their own heart, and their bows shall be broken. The little that the righteous have is better than the great riches of the wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The Lord knows the days of the godly, and their inheritance shall stand forever. They shall not be put to shame in the perilous time, and in days of famine shall have enough. But the wicked shall perish. Like the glory of the meadows, the enemies of the Lord shall vanish. They shall vanish like smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous are generous in giving. For those who are blessed by God shall possess the land, but those who are cursed by him shall be rooted out. When your steps are guided by the Lord, and you delight in his way, though you stumble, you shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds you fast by the hand. I have been young and now I'm old, yet never have I seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging their bread. All the day long they are generous in lending and their children also shall be blessed. Depart from evil and do good and you shall abide forever. For the Lord loves the thing that is right and will not forsake his faithful ones. The unjust shall be destroyed forever and the offspring of the wicked shall be rooted out. The righteous shall possess the land, and dwell in it for ever. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom, and their tongue speaks the thing that is right. The law of their God is in their heart, and their footsteps shall not slide. The wicked spy on the righteous, and seek occasion to slay them. The Lord will not leave them in their hand, nor let them be condemned when they are judged. Wait upon the Lord and keep his way. He will raise you up to possess the land, and when the wicked are uprooted, you shall see it. I myself have seen the wicked in great power and flourishing like a tree in full leaf. I went by and lo, they were gone. I sought them, but they could nowhere be found. Keep innocence and heed the thing that is right, for that will bring you peace at the last. But the sinners shall perish together, and the posterity of the wicked shall be rooted out. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in the time of trouble. The Lord shall stand by them and deliver them. He shall de deliver them from the wicked and shall save them because they have put their trust in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. 
A reading from Leviticus chapter 24 verses 1 to 9. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Command the people of Israel to bring your pure oil of beaten olives for the lamp, that a light may be kept burning regularly. Aaron shall set it up in the tent of meeting, outside the curtain of the covenant, to burn from evening to morning before the Lord regularly. It shall be a statue for ever throughout your generations. He shall set up the lamps and the lampstones of pure gold before the Lord regularly. You shall take choice flour and bake twelve loaves of it. Two tenths of an ephah shall be in each loaf. You shall place them in two rows, six in a row, on the table of pure gold. You shall, uh, you shall put pure frankincense with each row to be a token offering for the bread as an offering by fire to the Lord. Every Sabbath day Aaron shall set them in order before the Lord regularly as a commitment of the people of Israel, as a covenant forever. They shall be for Aaron and his descendants who shall eat them in a holy place, for they are most holy portions for him from the offerings by fire to the Lord, a perpetual Jew. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Before our next reading, some um, words of response based on Isaiah 42. I have given you as a light to the nations and have called you in righteousness. Thus says God who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwell in it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord and I have called you in righteousness, I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name, my glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning is now and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and they have called you in righteousness. The next reading is 1 Timothy chapter 4. Now, the Spirit expressly says that in later times some will renounce the faith by paying attention to deceitful spirits and teachings of demons through the hypocrisy of liars whose consciences are seared with a hot iron. They forbid marriage and demand abstinence from foods, which God created to be received with thanksgiving by those who believe and know the truth. For everything created by God is good, and nothing is to be rejected, provided it is received with thanksgiving, for it is sanctified by God's word and by prayer. If you put these instructions before the brothers and sisters, you will be a good servant of Christ Jesus, nourished on the words of the faith and of the sound teaching that you have followed. Have nothing to do with profane myths and all wives' tales. Train yourself in godliness, for while physical training is of some value, godliness is valuable in every way, holding promise for both the present life and the life to come. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance. For to this end we toil and struggle because we have hope, a hope set on the living God, who is the saviour of all people, especially of those who believe. These are the things you must insist on and teach. Let no one despise your youth, but set the believers an example in speech and conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. Until I arrive, give attention to the public reading of Scripture, to exhorting, to teaching. <clears throat> Do not neglect the gift that is in you, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands by the council of elders. Put these things into practice, devote yourself to them, so that all may see your progress. Pay close attention to yourself and to your teaching. Continue in these things, for in doing this 
you will save both yourself and your hearers. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Lord, we've heard your word this morning. We pray that you will help us to understand it and apply it to our lives. For we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. There are several things that occur to me. So the reading from Leviticus really is about honouring God and treating really everything in life as sacred, but remembering where every single gift comes from. And so there are 12 loaves, two rows of six, set before the Lord on the Sabbath day, and each loaf representing one of the tribes of Israel. And then in turn, because this is um, a holy offering, that bread is to be consumed by the sons of Aaron, the priest, and the Levites. And yet, we read that when David was um, on the run from King Saul, he went into the house of God, which in those days was a tabernacle rather than um, the physical temple. It was still a tabernacle. He took some of the bread that was set on side for the priest, uh, for the sons of Aaron, and he was unable to eat it. And then um, Jesus refers to this in his teaching because... At the end of the day, it isn't just about the, the rules and the regulations, it's the reason behind them. And the reason behind them is, is about honouring God. And because it was considered that um, David's work was a work of the Lord, he, he was enabled, as long as he was ritually clean, to take the, the, sh the showbread, um, the loaves, and share it with his men. And then we have um, Psalm 37, which jumps back and forward between this is what the wicked do, this is what the righteous do, this is how the wicked will end up, this is how the righteous will end up, and God sees everything that's going. And, and so we're reminded in Psalm 37 that from an eternal perspective, God knows the end from the beginning. And when we put our trust in him, ultimately, even though we may go through difficult circumstances, that God not only delivers us from circumstances, there are times he deliver, delivers us through them. Or, whatever we go through, in God's providence, is always for a purpose. And so in that sense, not only um, are the things that we have in our lives consecrated, we are consecrated to God. And that everything in our, our life should be seen as, as an offering to God. That there is nothing that's potentially unholy. So, the things that we watch on the telly, the food that we eat, you know, are we grateful for that food? Do we give thanks for that food? Are we grateful for um, the drinks that we have and the things that sustain us during this day? Remembering it all comes from, from God, really, is, is the theme. And then here we have this teaching in Timothy, this young pastor, um, unusually in the culture of the day, um, 2,000 years ago, the older you are, the more venerated you are generally in society in, 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 that, in that world. And yet here's Timothy, a young man who effectively is the elder of um, the church. And Paul, the Apostle Paul, has left Timothy in charge. And he's been gifted by God. And some of that gifting has come, as it says in this passage, because Paul has laid his hands on Timothy, in other words, he's recognised that Timothy has been set aside for God's service, laid his hands on Timothy and prayed prayers of blessing. And with those prayers have come the gifts of the Holy Spirit that Timothy will need as a leader. And so he's reminded of that. Do not neglect the gift that is in you, Paul says, which was given to you through prophecy with the laying on of hands and the counsel of elders. So prophecy, they've heard the word of the Lord. Set Timothy aside, consecrate him for my work. And there's been that laying on of hands and an impartation of the gifting of the Holy Spirit come through the apostles' hands and onto Timothy. But rather than make Timothy proud, the reminder here as Paul writes to Timothy, is remember, actually, that you have been set aside for God's purposes. And so that your whole life, Timothy, should 
be a living message. So when you read the scriptures and when you teach the scriptures, make sure you do so according with the truth that's in Jesus Christ. When you conduct yourself during the day, make sure that people will look at you and you are a reflection of Jesus Christ in your words, in your attitudes, in everything that you do this day. Because it's not just about the rules. It's about this wonderful promise that Jesus Christ wants to be part of Timothy's life in every aspect. And Jesus Christ wants to be Lord of our lives and part of our lives in every aspect, in everything that we do, everything that we, ha we are, and, and every single thing that we face. We are to approach it as an offering and as an opportunity to serve our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. You see, it isn't just loaves in Leviticus that God wants to consecrate. It's us. And Timothy reminds us of that because he was consecrated for the service of God. And so are we. Let's pray. So Lord, whatever we face, wherever we go this day, we pray that we would know your presence and that we will be a shining light and a witness for and to Jesus Christ. Amen. Um, moving on to the words of the Benedictus, the song of Zechariah, and then we will pause for a moment to pray, and then I must love you and leave you and go across and take the assembly. You promised, O oh God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. <coughs> A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins, in the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You promised, O God, to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us. Let us pray. Lord, wherever we go, whatever we do, whoever we meet, whatever the plans, we pray that they would be full of your presence. Lord, for those who struggle today, we pray for your help, whether that's with finances, whether it's with family or friends, whether it's circumstances, work or lack of work, whether it's worry or concern, whether it's illness in body, mind or spirit, we pray that you will minister to people this day. In the silence of our hearts, we pray for your blessing upon those people that we are thinking of at this time, as we ask you to minister to them as we pause for a moment. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The prayer of the collect for today. O oh God, you know us to be set in the midst of so many and great dangers, that by the reason of the frailty of our nature, we cannot always stand upright. 
grant to, to us such strength and protection as may support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations through Jesus Christ your Son our Lord who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit one God now and forever Amen as our Saviour taught us so we pray our Father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen the lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful day, folks, and um, I'll either see you on Sunday morning at 10.30 or 6 o'clock at the prayer gathering. Um, remember that um, we have uh, night prayer on Friday and on, on Monday and morning prayer Tuesday and Thursday. And just keep an eye on Facebook for different things. But um, whatever you're doing, be blessed. As long as it's something that's pleasing to God. But have a great day and may you know the presence of the Lord. Amen.